What is up? It's Damien here and welcome back to the channel. Now with Horror Nights only a couple of months away, I decided I'd cover the latest Halloween Horror Night speculation map from Horror Nightmares. Now we're going to cover the scare zones, the houses, as well as the entertainment. So let's jump right into that right now. So to start off with, we're going to start at the front of the park and work our way to the back and then loop around and then we'll do the same with the houses and then we'll discuss the entertainment. So to start off with, the very first scare zone we will encounter as we walk into the park is going to be the Carnival of Oddities, which is going to be based on Dr. Oddfellow's Carnival. And obviously, by the sounds of it, it says Oddities, so we can assume that there's probably going to be some sort of like freak show-esque kind of like thing going on, similar to like, you know, American Horror Story Freak Show, where we have like those kind of characters with deformities and things like that. So uh, the other thing to think about is also that it's listed as a horde on their map, and the reason why I believe it's listed as a horde on the map is because of the fact that obviously with the latest villain con, like minions area, being set up there, I don't think Universal wants to take away from that, uh, especially because it's going to draw a lot of crowds in. So I think that area there is going to probably have some sort of like very basic like props that they could slide in, slide out. But other than that, it's going to be very bare, not like we normally see there during Halloween Horror Nights. We leave that area there and we head towards New York. Once we hit the New York scare zone, that scare zone there on the map, you can see that there are some uh, zodiac symbols. Now these zodiac symbols here are obviously to the zodiac signs, uh, which leads us to believe that we are gonna have some sort of like envisioned uh, scare zone of the zodiacs so obviously you're going to have like air, like costumes representing aries sagittarius and things like that now i think this is going to be very interesting as it allows the creatives to kind of like interpret things the way they want to and give them so much more creative freedom uh than they would typically have in a normal scare zone because you know there's so many possibilities it leaves it so wide open even though it's such a narrow focused uh, idea and concept and then as we leave New York and head to San Francisco uh, As we head there we see on the map that it has these horns now these horns are kind of giving people the idea that it may be Krampus now I believe that it's gonna be that but I feel like it's gonna be more of like Krampus, but with some holiday extra holiday stuff thrown in there now The reason why I think that is simply because of the fact that if you have a look at the speculation map for Hollywood uh, they have a, hol uh, a holiday house over there, uh, and we obviously have what appears to be a Krampus scare zone, so I feel like those two are going to tie together a little bit somehow, uh, just to kind of give you that vibe between both parks. Uh, and yeah, so that's what I think is going to happen there as well. I do agree. I feel like it's going to be Krampus, maybe some holiday theming stuff around there. Um, and yeah, so that's what that is on the map. And then as we step back a little bit further, there's actually something interesting that may be over in Diagon Alley. So in Diagon Alley, uh, we're rumored to have this year the Death Eaters. Now normally we have them over Islands of Adventure and during the event, and obviously Diagon Alley never normally has anything. It's kind of the cool place to go chill, you know, hang out, uh, to get away from the heat and to get away from the crowds and the hustle and bustle. But I think this year over there, what we're going to have is we're going to have these Death Eaters, which is going to draw the people into there as well and utilize some more of the area, especially with the fact that a little bit further on, we're going to discuss the houses, but I think with some of the houses that we're going to have this year, we may see crowds that are going to be quite dense uh, just because of the popularity of those houses. So definitely, I... Definitely hope this is going to be true because I honestly want to see the Death Eaters in Diagon Alley. But I also think this is going to help Universal with the crowds a little. So I think they may have pushed for this this year to not only help with the crowds, but to like draw and just utilize that area a little bit more. So as we leave Diagon Alley, we're going to head over towards the Simpson area. Now this is typically where we'll see a chainsaw horde like hiding around with the chainsaws, getting ready to scare people and chase them down. Now, it's speculated on this map to be a Megan Horde uh, for the Megan TV show. Now, that is very interesting. Um, I think that could work. I'm going to be a little bit disappointed, though, if we don't see chainsaws there, because I'm so used to seeing them there, uh, that if you, know, if you don't see them there, it's kind of a sad time. So hopefully we get to see some chainsaws there, but if not, it's just probably going to be Megan doing her dance around the area, scaring people. Uh, as you move through. 
And then after we leave the Simpson scare zone, we are going to head into the Central Park area towards a scare zone called Jungle. Now this scare zone is just listed as Jungle on the map and honestly, I don't know what's gonna be in there. It could be like anything from snakes to ape-like creatures, like it honestly could be anything. That is the jungle scare zone, and I'm not sure what's actually going to be utilized in that area in terms of the actual scare actors and what they will be. And we'll just have to wait and see. And then as we leave the jungle area over in Central Park towards Hollywood, we will now see the scare zone there, which is going to be Vamp 69. Now this is supposed to be a hippie-esque vampire scare zone. Uh, think like Woodstock meet vampires. And that is the scare zone that is supposedly supposed to be there. Um, well, speculated to be there. So honestly, vamp scare zones are good, but honestly, I prefer some of the other scare zones over vamp scare zones. Uh, we've normally had some a lot of good scare zones in that area and it's typically been the scare zone for vamps in past years uh, but I feel like that area there may have grown out of it a little um, but yeah I mean it's not my favorite let me know in the comments uh, if you enjoy the vamp scare zones but yeah it's not my favorite so after that we basically head back to the front of the park and we are all done with the scare zones so we'll come to the front of the park again and we'll work our way through the houses now so the very first house is going to be this house that has the forest and the three claw marks through it now that house there is speculated to be a bigfoot house uh, the reasoning behind this and the, everyone's getting the idea from is because of the fact that we've had the swamp yeti we've had the yeti itself and now this is supposed to be well this is speculated to be the Bigfoot, uh, Bigfoot house. So this house is gonna be obviously three iterations. So that's kind of the idea behind it. That is kind of what's going on in the thought process there. So as we leave that house there and we move on to the next, the next speculated house is supposed to be the Exorcist. Now this house doesn't, it was like in the previous map, it was supposed to be the latest Exorcist movie and now it's just listed as the Exorcist. Uh, it's kind of interesting because like, is it gonna be the new movie? Is it gonna be the old movie? Like they've done a house previously before of the Exorcist. It's kind of up in arms. Uh, would I like to see the Exorcist house again? Eh, I've seen it before. I would prefer to see the new, a movie for the, I, a house for the new movie, but honestly, if not, then I would prefer to see a different house altogether. So honestly, at the end of the day, I'm it's probably not gonna be one of my favorite houses if this does in fact turn out to be The Exorcist. So as we leave The Exorcist, we move on to the next house, which has this pentagram symbol and a village below. Uh, I had some thoughts behind this. Uh, last year, there was the bar that was at the speakeasy and it was like a witch speakeasy i'm wondering if the whole the whole story behind this is like we've now like left that uh witch speakeasy and now we're out in the witch village kind of like a salem witch village uh where that speakeasy was housed to kind of continue on that story of witches that's honestly my thought behind it especially considering it's in the same sound stage as it was uh as the witch speakeasy was last year and honestly, it'd be cool to have a house that kind of like continues on through the years where we like start on the small minute detail and kind of expand upon it and step through it. Uh, and then all of a sudden find out, hey, guess what? Everything was linked. That would be awesome. So that's my speculation on that. Uh, then as we leave that house, we move on to the next, which is supposed to be Stranger Things 4. Now, honestly, don't hate me on this, but I have not watched Stranger Things it just hasn't gripped me and hasn't gained my interest enough to really want to watch it. Maybe this year I watch it as like a pre a pre Halloween Horror Night season thing to like get myself into it. But honestly, I have not seen it and I can't really comment on the past years because yes, the house has looked fantastic, but I can't compare it to the TV show because I have not seen the TV show. So that's a bad on me and I probably should watch it, but it just hasn't really I, i'm just not irked to watch it so 
you know, I'll go through the house. I'll probably enjoy the facades if it is a Stranger Things 4 house and enjoy my time going through it. But I, uh, unless I watch it, I'm going to really not, it's not going to be a standout house to me. And I'm probably not going to want to wait a significant amount of time just to go through the house because it will be a very long wait given the popularity of the show. So, as we leave that house, we're now going to move on to the next one. Now, this has a dragon and a castle. Now, this is speculated to be a dueling dragon's house. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, I kind of couldn't see how that could have been one. Originally, I, I was never, I like, obviously, I'm from Australia, hadn't been to Universal before uh, until I came over here. So back when it was Dueling Dragons, I'd never actually been here, never got to ride it, never got to see the theming. Uh, I've only ever gone to know it from, obviously, Harry Potter. So, you know, I haven't, didn't get to ever see the theming. So I struggled to, like, kind of get the idea and the concept of, like, this could be scary until I decided to watch a video from back in the day and I got to saw the theming in there and then I was like, damn, this actually could be a very good, uh, a very good house. So, do I think that it's going to be a Jewel and Dragon's house? Potentially. Do I think it will work well? I think it can. Uh, and honestly, I'm hoping that if it is, as you go to leave the house, we get hit with one of those scares with like an animatronic like dragon head just getting ready to blow fire at us as we're leaving. So, you know, I, I hope that's what's going to be there. And I, I have a feeling that's what's possibly going to be there, given the fact that Universal tends to like to leave those like those last scares there and normally has some sort of like animatronic at the end, at least in one of the two of the houses uh, throughout the years. And then as we leave the Dueling Dragons house, we're going to then head towards Fast and the Furious. Now, the Fast and the Furious house is speculated to be Chucky. Now, Chucky is definitely going to be at the event. It's just where on the map is he speculated to be. So he's definitely at the event. There is no ifs or buts. It was announced last year. So I speculate this is going to be the house here in this exact location for a couple of reasons. Now the very first reason is just ultimately the length of the house maze that goes through the area. Now after going through it with Freaky and Blackphone last year, it, it was a pretty short run through, like there isn't too much to it, it's kind of a couple of like zigzags and then stop into the next area and then back through a zigzag again. That's kind of how that house went last year. I feel like it's going to be the same way, except this year, you know, maybe the first half will be animatronics, and then the second half will be like us shrinking down to this, the Chucky size, and then having normal scare actors size Chucky's through the rest. Or the other reason why I think this is going to be the Chucky house here is because of the fact that this spring, the sprung up tents at the back tend to flood. And now if you're going to use animatronics, it's probably not a good idea to spend a lot of money on animatronics and have them in an area where it potentially floods a lot. So you're probably going to want to have that in an area where it doesn't flood, and that area there does not flood. So I would, I would speculate that this is going to be the location for the house of Chucky. Now as we leave Chucky, we're going to head to this next house. The next house is at the back of the park, and it has this, this like like kind of like stamp looking symbol now this symbol you can see an O and a C which everyone's speculating to be Odd Valor's Carnival uh, and then if you actually have a look uh, at this image over here uh, that image there is kind of the same symbol with uh, Jack's initials over the top of it uh, so it's giving the idea like this is kind of linked together, obviously Oddfellow and Jack. So this is what's speculated to be back here. Uh, it's going to be cool in my, I think it's going to be cool in my opinion, uh, just because obviously the front of the park you have the oddities and then at the back of the park you're probably going to have the carnival itself where we're going to see some of the similar oddities but we're going to see a lot more clowns and just a lot more going on in terms of the way a carnival is. Uh, so yeah, it's it could play very well into the hand of like, you walk through the horde and then you end up at the carnival at the back. Um, 
I'm looking forward to it. It ties into Halloween Horror Nights' lore, and it's definitely going to be one of those houses that I think is going to be probably number three on my list, uh, just because any house that has Halloween Horror Nights' lore, uh, or any house that end up, ends up being somewhat tied to a icon, uh, you know, legendary truth, or any of those kind of areas there, uh, I enjoy the most. So with this one here being tied specifically to the lore and being Jack's boss, I feel like this house here is going to stand out to me. So then as we leave that house, we are going to head to the next one, which has this guitar icon. So the symbol on here is a guitar with horns. Now, I don't really know kind of what's going to be kind of there. I, I had a quick look online, just a quick Google of like uh, some music artists that like have like sold their soul to the devil or made a deal with the devil uh, and I came across a couple of artists and uh, there's obviously a couple of blues artists, uh, jazz blues um, and I feel like that there is probably going to be the vibe that's going to be there. It's going to be some sort of musician uh, who's come to a crossroads and he has decided to make a deal with the devil to become very good at his craft and then ultimately that's going to be like the whole saga is like going through not being really good at your musical craft, then all of a sudden getting to this crossroads, meeting the devil, making a deal with the devil, then seeing what happens afterwards. And that's kind of like the idea and the the kind of th vibe that I'm getting and the flow that I feel like the house is gonna have. Uh, so there's that, and then also, you know, in my dreams it could be a Tenacious D house, but it's probably not gonna be that, so that is definitely not gonna happen. I <laughs> Just my, my thought there is uh, if they could have a, a Tenacious D house, that would be pretty epic, but you know, it's not going to happen. It's just not. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that house there. The next house that we move on to is going to be the Lost of Us. So obviously this house here has been announced. Uh, it was sp supposed to be earlier on. It was supposed to be the HBO series uh, Lost of Us. Obviously things changed, and now it is the Naughty Dog Last of Us. Not really too much of a difference. TV show, game. TV show is based on the game. It's basically all the same. Uh, this kind of house, I feel like, is going to give me the vibes of Seas of Extinction, uh, which was a very good house. Uh, obviously, plants that were trying to kill people, overgrown plants, like, you know, post-apocalyptic. I feel like it's going to be a very similar vibe, obviously with clickers, rather than a lot of the other plants that we saw in the Seas of Extinction. So that's kind of my vibe there. I, I'm i looking forward to seeing the house. Uh, haven't seen the TV show, played a little bit of the game. This is going to be one of those houses that's going to have a very long wait time. It's going to more than likely draw people out uh, from both the gaming community and from the people that like to enjoy the TV show. So. I see this house being probably the house with the longest wait time and also being one of the houses that has, you know, the biggest fandom behind it uh, other than Stranger Things. So that is what is going in there. And then the last house that we have on the speculation map is supposed to be a Universal Monsters house and it is supposed to be Universal Monsters Powers. Now, this house here... Universal Monsters themes are good. I don't know how they're gonna, like, if there's gonna be some sort of tie-in into getting to Paris from the previous house that they had there last year with the, Mon uh, with the Collide, Universal Monsters Collide. But um, yeah, I mean, any sort of house that's gonna potentially have Universal Monsters that aren't classic, like, not classic, but like normally seen, uh, will be very, very good. So uh, this house is supposed to have uh, Dracula, Phantom of the Opera, and then I can't remember the, the, the speculating, oh, the Hunchback, it's kind of up in air on what's actually going to be there, um, but we're more than likely going to see a, some universal monsters that we don't typically see, which is a very good thing to have, because, you know, uh, year after year, just seeing the same universal monsters kind of gets a little, little boring, even though the houses are good, I'm not hating on the monsters, I just would like to see some more inclusion in some of the less... Uh, featured monsters and after that that will conclude all of the houses for this year uh, and the scare zones 
So the last thing that we have is the entertainment. So the entertainment this year is going to obviously be uh, Nightmare Fuel. Uh, we always have that every year now. It's basically a staple. And then the next one is supposed to be a vamp show over by Vamp 69. This is supposed to tie into the 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 Woodstock theme, uh, I believe. And yeah, that's basically the two shows there that we're supposed to have. So if you've enjoyed uh, catching up on the speculation map, enjoy the video, hit the, hit the like button, subscribe, you know the rest. Thank you for uh, sticking with me and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the fog.